10 similarities between Yahya Jame and Muammar Gaddafi. Research shows that people who have a lot of similarities, including intellectual compatibility, end up staying together. Jame and Gaddafi enjoyed a very close relationship during their time in office. In fact, a lot of people view Jame as Gaddafi's prodigy. It is a well-known fact that Gaddafi supported Jame immensely when he newly took over the Gambia and even years that followed. Thus, today we are going to look at 10 striking similarities between these two leaders who a lot of Africans regard as great Pan-African revolutionaries. By the end of this video, we will be able to bring you into, into light the qualities these two leaders possess that distinguish them from the rest. Number 1 Military background. Both Yahya Jame and Muammar Gaddafi were members of the military forces in their respective countries. Muammar Gaddafi joined the Libyan military after studying law at the University of Libya. He entered the military academy in 1963 and graduated at the age of 23 in 1965, the year Yahya Jame was born. A year later, he traveled to the United Kingdom to further his military training as a communication officer under the Libyan monarchy regime. Similarly, Jame joined the Gambia National Gendarmerie right after high school, before he was commissioned as a commanding officer of the Gambia National Army, part of the Presidential Guard. Jame, like Gaddafi, also had overseas train military training, but in the United States. It is interesting to note that both Jame and Gaddafi their military background likely played a role in their authoritarian leadership styles. Military training often emphasizes obedience and discipline, which may have contributed to their beliefs in the need for strict control over their countries and their people. Number 2. Military Coup They both came to power in their respective countries through military coups. They both were second generation leaders. Gaddafi founded a revolutionary group within the military and carried out a coup against the Libyan monarchy at the age of 27 and he qu quickly consolidated power, declaring himself the leader of the country in 1969. This Libyan monarchy was the first and last kingship in Libya. It lasted for only 18 years. Jame seized power in the Gambia at the age of 29 in 1994, that is 25 years after Gaddafi's coup. Jame's coup was relatively bloodless and he quickly consolidated power after seizing control from the country's first democratically elected president. However, there were reports of summary executions and disappearances in the aftermath of the coup. In Libya, Gaddafi's coup was more violent with members of the royal family and their supporters executed or imprisoned. Number 3. Anti-Colonialism Mindset both Jame and Gaddafi were vocal cri critics of Western imperialism and championed the cause of African unity. Gaddafi was a major supporter of the African Union and advocated for the creation of a single African government and currency. Gaddafi, Gaddafi's plan was to introduce a currency backed by gold called the gold dinar, which would be used to buy and sell oil on the international market and potentially destroy the US dollar and other Western currencies. A lot of people believe this is why America invaded Libya and killed Gaddafi because of the threat this poses to the Western hegemony. Jame similarly emphasized the need for African countries to unite and resist Western influence, often speaking out against what he saw as neocolonialism. He saw himself as a champion of the Gambian people and African solidarity. He emphasized the need for African countries to rely on their own resources and traditions and he launched a number of initiatives aimed at promoting agricultural self-sufficiency and reducing dependencies on imported food and western medicine. This he dubbed, eat what you grow and grow what you eat. Beyond that, he even claimed to cure HIV and AIDS and cancer while using African herbs. Number 4. Brutal Rule both Jame and Gaddafi were authoritarian leaders who maintained strict control over the media, suppressed op opposition, and used violence to maintain their grips on the power. 
In Libya, Gaddafi's regime also used violence to maintain power, including using the military to quell protests and riots. Gaddafi's control Gaddafi controlled the country's media and persecuted anyone who opposed his rule, including political dissidents and ethnic minorities. In Gambia, Jami established the National Intelligence Agency NIA, a powerful security agency that was responsible for extrajudicial killings, torture and arbitrary detention. Jami's regime was known for its brutal tactics against political opponents and journalists. Journalists were frequent frequently harassed, arrested and forced into exile, and several were murdered under his rule. An example of this is the famous Data Hydra and even Solo Sanding. Number 5. Personality Cult Both leaders cultivated a personality cult around themselves, with Gaddafi styling himself as the brother leader of Libya and Jame portraying himself as a mystic with supernatural powers. Both leaders used propaganda and state media to promote their own image and suppress dissent. Gaddafi's regime was known for its cult of personality, with image of the Libyan leader appearing everywhere from billboards to public buildings. His face appeared on a wide variety of items including postage stamps, watches and school bags. Jame also cultivated a cult of personality around himself in the name of Sheikh Professor Dr. Al Haji Yahya Aziz Awal James Junkun Jame Babeli Mansa. Beyond that, new, the new Gambian currency bearing his name started circulating in the country. All these are marketing tools for masses to see them everywhere they turn, so the younger generation will see them as superheroes with a bad right to rule over them. This system of governance in time gives birth to a monarchy. Number 6. Women Gaddafi had the Amazonian Guard. This was an all female elite of bodyguards who surrounded Colonel Muammar Gaddafi for more than 20 years. Gaddafi reportedly employed these female bodyguards because he believed that an Arab gunman would have difficulty firing at women. These women, almost 30 in number, were trained in martial arts and firearms and were fiercely loyal to Gaddafi. They were responsible for his personal security and were often seen accompanying him on foreign visits. The Amazonian guard was also responsible for entertaining Gaddafi and keeping the house tidy. After Gaddafi's death, some of his female bodyguards accused him and his sons of rape and abuse. Similarly. Jame reportedly had over 40 attire girls around him for his pleasure. These included women from different parts of the world according to reports who were lawyered to act as his sex slaves at the state house and his palace in Kanilai. We covered this topic in our previous video so do make sure to check it out. Gaddafi and Jame, like many political leaders, have had enormous sexual appetites. In fact, studies have found that men who are more powerful or successful in their careers have more sex and more sexual partners. Number 7. Legacy Both Gaddafi and Jame left behind foundations that generations will remember them for. It is reported that Libya under Gaddafi's regime had zero debt, free education, free health care. If you wanted to own a farm, they will give you all the support like tractors, land, seed, etc. you need to till that farm. Libya under Gaddafi's rule was completely free to do whatever they wanted. It was a food self-sufficient country, totally independent, leveraging on its natural resources like gold and oil. That is why a lot of politi political analysts said the West called him a dictator because he wouldn't allow them to have access to Libya's wealth. Jame, like Gaddafi, initiated free basic education in the Gambia for women. He also set, or, set up the Jame Foundation for Peace that sponsored a lot of students at the UDG. A lot of students also got the chance to study in Taiwan and China from the relationship he built with these two countries. In addition, he tried to make agriculture sexy. He tried to get Gambians involved in the field and immensely supported Gambian farmers. 
But unlike Libya, Gambia does not have resources like oil and gold to embark on large-scale social projects like Gaddafi did. But overall, Jame was commended for his efforts. Number 8. Green both Gaddafi and Jame were associated with the color green, which was the symbolic color of their regimes. The green flag was adopted in 1977, eight years after he consolidated power. It was the only national flag in the world with just one color and no design, insignia or other details. It was chosen by Gaddafi to symbolize his political philosophy, that is Islamic socialism, African nationalism and Arab socialism. Gaddafi simply put was a Pan-African Arab Muslim. Similarly, for Jame, green represented the color of his APRC party whose ideology was mainly anti-colonialism and religious conservatism. Both leaders share a cultural, social and political philosophy that seeks to promote and preserve traditional institutions, practices and values, and the green color best represented, represented that to them. Number 9. AU Chairman Gaddafi had long promoted stronger union within the organization and previously outlined his vision for a continent-wide government. He had also previously said he wanted a single African military force, a single currency, and a single passport for Africans to move within the continent. In pursuit of this, he was elected as the chairman of the African Union in 2009. However, Gaddafi failed to receive backing for the idea of a United States of Africa because a lot of African leaders felt threatened by a bigger power that would sweep away their individual sovereignty. The Americans invaded Libya two years after this. Jame, like Gaddafi, pursued chairmanship for the African Union but withdrew his candidacy at some point. That was in 2012, shortly after the 2011. Gambia presidential election making, marking his fourth term in office. According to reports, Yahya Jame felt it better to concentrate on domestic politics. He wanted to devote the first year of his re-election to satisfy and meet the needs and aspirations of the Gambian people. Number 10. Long Rule Gaddafi ruled Libya for 42 years, while Jame ruled the Gambia for 22 years. A lot of political analysts said that Gaddafi had attained his full self-sufficiency goal in Libya and the next big challenge for him was to put the other African countries on the same pedestal. Whereas in the Gambia, in those 22 years under Jame, we were far from, from reaching the, that goal. Lots of critics felt Jame was off guard in his later time in office. He had lost the vision and was turning more into enriching himself and exploiting ways to maintain his grip on power to even start a monarchy. He was ousted in 2016 presidential election. Well viewers, if there's anything to take away from this video that made these two leaders go this far is number one, their military training. In Africa, a lot of people are uneducated and they need discipline. The only language they understand is the cane. And that is exactly what the military does. It breeds, strong, it breeds strong men who know how to discipline these people and instill fear in them to maintain order and peace. Second, Gaddafi was more educated than Jame and his country had more resources than the Gambia. He therefore had more powers than Jame and could do the unthinkable.